Hey guys, welcome to another self-love conversation. Here is the conversation that I've been waiting for all week. Now, I told you guys, we are doing our selfish retreat that is happening this weekend. And we have one of our facilitators here, Robert Utario, who I love and adore. Remember, he came on um, in April to our self-love conversation where he was talking about uh, trauma and everything. So Robert, thank you so much for being back and thank you so much for coming to Atlanta this weekend. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to come. You know, I uh, I said, I, I said, I know you've been talking to uh, Roper a lot, but I have been sitting here getting my notes ready, getting my stuff ready. Like I have my book because I'm coming as a participant too, <laughs> right? I'm coming. I know I'm hosting, but I'm coming as a participant only because, you know, this workshops are one of my favorites because I, I know that most of the women who are coming and we're going to have an intimate group, they're trying to figure out why they do the things that they do they're trying to figure out at their core you know what are some of the things that are holding them back because they just don't know right and most of them don't understand how their trauma plays into it they don't know uh you know why they can't open up or have good relationships like that so i told them i said i'm gonna get robert on you so that he could go ahead <laughs> and he could break this thing down. So just tell us a little bit about yourself, Robert, and, you know, what can we expect? Yeah, like I said, I'm honored to come. Um, it's a, a true blessing. I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait to meet everyone and, and have an engaging conversation. You can expect me not to just preach to people. I love, you know, open dialogue and discourse and and people can ask questions and most importantly, you know, I, people need to understand that one of my jobs and one of my goals is to make it as safe as possible, that this is a safe space, um, regardless of what you've been through or what you've witnessed in life um, and where we go with this conversation and, and where this all leads to, it has to be in a safe space. Um, so that's that's like just number one. So, I, you know, people might be nervous and anxious and maybe even terrified to, to have these kinds of conversations. So I would just tell them now to just try and relax and breathe and, and you know, we're all gonna do it together. We're all here together, okay? Um, I've been doing rape crisis advocacy for over 14 years now. Um, it's fascinating because I never thought I'd become a rape crisis counselor and I never thought I'd become an educator. Never thought I'd work with kids and yet I do all three of them. And the, the, my point of that is that there's so many things that hold us back that you don't think you can do something with, it's ultimately not true because, you know, I am one, just one example of many people that uh, do things in life that never thought they would, you know, insecurities, fears, past trauma, all these things can play a role in how we um, kind of live our lives. So yeah, my goal, you know, I want to uh, meet with everyone and talk and we're gonna have a, a deep discussion among the issues of sexual assault and uh, sexual violence, trauma in general, um, how it does affect people, the connections of how it can affect your life from, from childhood all the way through adulthood, um, but other ways of how we can heal with that, uh, things that can help people in the healing process. Um, you know, and we're gonna have a small little writing workshop. I think there's many different ways that people can express themselves and heal and find healing for themselves. And one of the ways, um, is writing and it's an, an intimate way that and I'm not forcing you to read it you know it's right. not you don't have to show it to me I'm not your English teacher right like you're not getting being graded on this um, so that will be part of it with some peaceful music um, I also plan on bringing some boxing gloves and some pads so if anyone wants to put the gloves on they can wail away because that's another good way um, to get some emotion up yeah I was I was sitting up here and I was talking to my friends because I was like um our Friday night, we're going to have you at a nice restaurant, right? And it's going to be a, a, a nice little meet and greet. I hope you like seafood, right? And I'm not picky. <laughs> I, I was, uh, I was, I was telling them, I was like, you know, it is so rare to have these kind of conversations where 
you just don't know what you're going to get out of it. And the fact that you're going to you're going to take us through different things because some people are not ready to talk, but they are right. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you got some people who want to talk. And uh, Mm -hmm. when I was sitting and I was speaking to uh, some of the ladies, just explaining some of the things that we were going to go through, I found myself where I was like, man, I got to work through my stuff where how do I how do I move on to taking this next step? when it when it comes for me getting over my fear of being married again right because now i'm in like this this little dating thing and and i'm saying to myself everybody who says the m word gets blocked right because i'm like no i'm not doing that you know not right now and it's like well what what is the fear and the fear is you don't want to be that vulnerable again right and you just never know uh, uh, Robert, how trauma affects you? Like, I somebody would think that that's minuscule of of what I'm talking about versus somebody who was sexually assaulted or anything like that. But how much of that actually stops your life? Right? It could be anything. A manager yelled at you at work, and so you feel like you can't speak anymore. Mm-hmm. Or you, your parents did something to you where they told you to be quiet. So that's what you do, right? Mm-hmm. But we don't know that. We don't know why we do what we do, right? And so the the, the things that you're going to take us through, I get excited about it because we never done that before. Mm-hmm. You never opened up before to be in that safe space. Right. And so I'm just I'm I'm just ecstatic about it. And I just wanted to thank you publicly for actually coming and really helping us because I think it's going to be amazing. So tell us about your book too. Yeah, before I even say that, you know, you said the word vulnerability, you know, to be vulnerable, which is for a lot of people just like blatantly terrifying. So if anyone's out there listening to this and it is scary for you to be vulnerable, you have to understand that that is actually normal to be nervous, scared, anxious. Um, But vulnerability, I would almost I would argue that it's necessary at Mm -hmm. times, but it's also of who you become vulnerable with and how you choose to be vulnerable. And, you know, fear is incredibly powerful. So hopefully one of my goals is to ideally break down some of that fear, ideally just kind of hopefully kill it for some people um, because you don't have to live in fear. You don't have to, it, it makes sense to, you know, be worried to, to, to maybe get married again or be worried to date again or be terrified to be in a sexual situation or, or whatever it might be. Right. Um, but the fear doesn't have to control and cripple our lives. So hopefully I can help with that. And uh, that would be one of my goals. The, the, the book is, uh, my book is called To the Survivors. It is a combination of my journey as a rape crisis counselor, uh, why I got into it, what the experiences were like with all these stories of people. And there's true stories in this book. There's written poetry. There's written stories and in interviews um, with women, men, and one transgender man. And it's all raw and real. It, you know, it all it's all honest. And it all shows, you know, what happened to them, how it affected them, but how they've come out of it. Um, and it's not easy. And part of this, you know, beautiful workshop, no one should lie to you and say that it's easy because it isn't. Right. Um, but you really can grow in many different ways, ways you can't even fathom. Um, and so part of the book shows that. I think that's part of the power of the book is the authenticity and, again, the vulnerability of these people to open up with me. And they trusted me enough to put it in a book and to hopefully share it with the world. And uh, that's I'll have copies um, in Atlanta. Yeah. And, you know, I never forced the book on anyone ever because it is so raw. It can be triggering. Um, but it can be quite helpful too. So people, you know, ladies out there, you have the choice, right? Like you can choose to pick it up. You can choose to look at it. You can stay away and be like, absolutely not. And maybe you're not ready for it now and that's okay. And maybe you're ready for it in five years, you know, who knows, but I definitely don't force it on anyone. So what what can you say? Because I, I know one of our biggest things is that um, a lot of women that we talk to, they say, I want to come and I want you know, to really 
you know, figure stuff out and, and get my stuff out there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't, I don't really want to live back there again. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to, it's too emotional for me, Gloria. And, And I've been getting a lot of that, right? It's too emotional for me. I don't, I I, want to be able to enjoy my day. And what I tell them is, this is your breakthrough time. Mm. This is your breakthrough time because you believe that you are enjoying your day. But at the same time, you keep reliving, reliving, reliving what happened. And you trying to figure out why you keep doing the same thing. Why is your finances the same? Why you can't move forward? Mm -hmm. What would you tell that woman who is definitely on the fence? And and there's a lot of them that is going to listen to this later because they they trying to figure out like, well, what exactly are we going to talk about and do and 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 how, you know, how vulnerable do I need to be? What would you say to that woman? I would tell you to still come. <laughs> you know, I would say come mm-hmm. you're with people that actually care about you, right? Like you, I would not fly down from Boston, Massachusetts if I didn't believe in this, if I didn't care about you, if I didn't want this to be helpful, I just wouldn't do that. And so you're you're with people that they're so concerned for you and they want you to deal with and, and grow from whatever it is that afflicting you, right? Like not everyone suffers from the powers of sexual violence, right? Like this, right. but, um, but as scary as it is, I would say if you were ever going to do it, do it in a group setting with people that, again, are, are in similar maybe places or, again, with, with some professionals that really care. I have tons. Of, I have resources for people. I have things. And it doesn't just end that day. You know, it goes on. Um, but you also don't have to. No one's. I'm not asking you to tell me your deepest and darkest secrets of life and set it in front of 30 people. Or whatever it is, no one's saying that. Now you can if you choose to, and you might be led that way. There might be something inside of you that just breaks and you have to say it. And you'd be shocked of how powerful that would be for yourself and for others, right? But there may you might not feel comfortable doing that, which is okay. And you might feel comfortable speaking to me or someone else privately, correct, throughout the day, which is more than okay. Or you might not feel comfortable speaking at all, and that's okay. So you have to understand that. And maybe you write something, but maybe with the resources, maybe the things you learn that day, or the things you encounter, you may, we hopefully can be a bridge to where you need to go. Because the truth is, if you don't deal with whatever it is afflicting you, it will continue. And it might get worse in your life. Yeah. And do you I, agree? I do. I do. And that's why I, <laughs> that's why I'm so passionate about this. This is like my this is like my favorite program that we Mm. have because I know what it has done for me, Mm. right? I know what it means to be in a room and just be so vulnerable, but also have someone who sits there and say, I know exactly how you feel. I I can really, really understand but what I'm, but what I'm hearing is right. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. we get so wrapped up in our story where we feel it so much. We still don't get the other side of it as to how it's really affecting us to the point where we need to change. Right. Mm -hmm. When I, when I went, when I was going through my process, one of the things that the lady told me was, you know, Gloria, I, I, I hear you. But I also hear that you are so afraid to try again that you're stuck. How do we work through that? How do we go ahead and start to change that story? Mm -hmm. And I'm so wrapped up in the crying and, you know, and all Mm -hmm. of that where I'm like, what? (laughs) You know, because I'm so wrapped up in the victim side of it where I didn't even realize the part that I was playing in holding myself back. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense. And to have a person so calmly just say, well, let's, let's talk about the fear that you have. 
because that's yep. what you just told me. You know, if we wipe away the tears and we walk through this thing, mm -hmm. if we can get through the fear, then you probably won't have no problem. And I sat there and I was like, well, let me go ahead and pay attention. <laughs> you know, like, yep. be, because there's no one out on the outside who is giving us the feedback to help us get through it. Does it make sense? It does. You know, it makes perfect sense. And, 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 and I think it's so needed because people are so close to what they want, what they, how they want to live their life, Robert. And it's the small little things that hold us back, the small little things that mm -hmm. we don't recognize. And even if it's something that is, you know, as traumatic, where we need a little bit more help at least we know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At least we know what it is. And, and that's why I love these type of uh, events. And we're going to do plenty more because this is where the awakening and the self-awareness happens. Mm -hmm. There's uh, in my book, I know this conference is all women. There's a book in, in uh, there's a man in my book named Don who is abused as a child. And, um, depression, alcoholism, and he's, a, he's an older man now. And um, he just said something that was so profound. He just said, this is why, this is why, this is why. And, you know, when you really, I, I, I'd be willing to bet if I, if I said something to, to the women about someone else, right, if I gave them a story of someone else, and I said, hey, you know, here's this, you know, uh, kid who was in an abusive home, or the father was, was absent, or, or a woman who was treated you know, terribly in a relationship, right? And I, they would probably intellectually understand everything I was saying, right. right? For that person in this story, but they might not relate it to themselves. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? And you say, well, what's the difference? And then you look at, well, this is what you've experienced and this is what you've seen. How, how could it not affect you? How, and that's part of this workshop is trauma. Trauma comes in many different ways. How, why would trauma not affect a human being? It does. And it's okay to, to acknowledge that. It's okay. Um, there's this, I want to talk about even compassion, but really compassion for your own self. You need to be patient with yourself. And, and you know, I will talk a lot, hopefully, uh, this weekend about even truth and lies. There, there are a lot of lies in the world, lies that, you know, messages we see and things we tell ourselves. And we're not often seeing the truth of who we really are, you know, and, and, some of that boils down to uh, oftentimes people really do blame themselves for some things that other people do to them. That mm -hmm. is a huge part of, that's a huge part of my education training. That was a huge part of my, my mission is to really help people understand, not just intellectually, emotionally, spiritually in their being that they are not ever at fault for what something, someone else, something someone else did to them. OK, there, there, there's a huge difference. So if you continue to stay, you know, in this space where you really do believe that it is still your fault, no matter what it is, you will continue to suffer. Wow. And with this training, but it, it, it is not. And that's what I'll try. I could spend an hour on that. Right. Like nothing else almost like may teach matters if like we don't understand that. And, you know, I, I work with kids and I try to tell them, like you mentioned finances. I'd love to help people with finance if I could. But I tell my kids you got to work in life. Okay. You need to work hard for what you want or just work in general. You got to deal with nonsense in the world. It, nothing's just, you don't just get it all. Okay. You have to work, right? No matter where you come from, you got to work. And so when we talk about this kind of stuff, you still got to put in work and it's very difficult, but that's, will provide you with resources and it's a team effort. And as it goes on from this weekend and beyond, because it doesn't just stop in Atlanta. It That's goes right. on. Yeah. And so we'll, and if, and if there's resources that don't work for you, fine, but you got to find something that clicks with you, something that connects with you. Absolutely. So does that make sense? It does. It really does. And that's why I said, ladies, you have to be able to go ahead and get your ticket. Come see Robert, come just have the whole experience because I'm, I'm telling you guys, when you get in the room and you are surrounded by people who care about you, 
-hmm. and you are in a place where you can just really open up. You're not in front of your family. You're not in front of people where you will be judged. You are Mm -hmm. in front of people who have the empathy, who understands and who will listen to you. You will walk out of there with the self-awareness that you need like Robert said, in order for you to continue your journey, but you got to know what it is, right? That is holding you in this place where you are now. Because I tell them, Robert, you feel it on the inside. There's something that you know is not right, but you just don't know how to articulate it. You're not sure what it is. You're not sure how you can actually formulate it into words. This is where you formulate it into words so that you can finally figure out the steps you need to take to move forward, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a safe space. I would, I would say, get your ticket. I would say, come. And you got to understand too, I don't, and even in my book, it can be very difficult for some people. Some people, they don't find it as as intense um but i don't and there's some very uh it's just it's honest it's just raw but it can bring you down but i never leave you down it's you got to come back up so this is not about you know talking about like miserable things and we're just going to be depressed absolutely not we're gonna have some laughs right we're gonna listen to some music like we're gonna right we're gonna laugh now like we're gonna go through maybe a range of emotions but we never leave you down ever and um one of it's you're not alone you're not alone. You're never alone, even if you feel that way. And it's, it's okay if you feel that way, but you're not. And you might have been treated horrendously and you might have even opened up and told people about it and you've been treated poorly. That's another big thing I deal with in my work where people finally open up about what happened to them and they're treated horrendously for it. And it, it, it makes them so much worse. It ruins them even more than the pain itself. Very sad. It's not okay. That's not what we're doing. We're there to, again, not judge you, to listen to you and to help you in any way that we can. And we're going to be with you. We're all together. We're all together. And you say earlier, you know, there's some people that they know something's like inside is wrong and they know, like they don't know what it is. Some people really don't know what it is. And some people do know what it is. And they're just so scared to get it out because once it's out, then it's out. But it's okay to get it out on your own terms in the way that you do it in your own language, in your words, however you do it. I teach writing classes where I have one, um, I've had uh, kids and adults that they only write poetry mm-hmm. and they're beautiful poets. I'm not here to tell them to write memoirs, right? There's nothing wrong with writing poetry, right? Mm-hmm. Cause that's how they convey their truths and their ideas and their emotions. So a part of this is also just trying to get you to have your own voice and your voice is strong. Mm, 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 mm. Well, I can't wait. I, I said for the, uh, for the, for the meet and greet on Friday, when we was thinking about where to take you, I, you know, I opened it up to the women who want to come. And I was just telling, I was just telling them, well, don't bombard him on a Friday when he gets there. Let the man eat at least. Right. I, <laughs> I, 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 because because look, because I said, you know, I had uh, some of my, some of my friends were like, well, can we come and kind of like hang out with him? I said, yeah, but you don't <laughs> want to bombard the dude, right? Where, oh, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm sure. I didn't think I was getting food. I'm, I'm yeah, thankful like, I'm getting food. Yeah, like, like let him eat his dinner and everything. And then, you know, if you have any deeper questions, when, when, when we get there on Saturday, we will go ahead and do our work. But they was like, yeah, you know, we want to come and we want to sit at the table and we just going to talk. I said, let that man eat his food. <laughs> so, so anyone who comes on Friday, you can talk. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> it really doesn't. I can eat and listen at the same time. Hey, don't say that now, Robert. You have no. a whole table full of women and they're going to be like, yo, dude, <laughs> how you <laughs> how you managing this? It's like, no. <laughs> I'll so, tell you this. If, if I'm flying down. I might as well make use of my time, right? I know it. So we, yeah. um, so Friday we're gonna we're gonna treat you to a nice dinner, so you know, um, you know, see the city a little bit, have a talk. Saturday, 
you know, you're going to do your thing. We're going to do our thing. And then Sunday, you know, we're going to do it. And then I think, I think we're all going to have an amazing time. And yeah. I just, I just appreciated the conversation that we had before. And I was just telling everyone, like, we got to get this guy here. We got to get this guy here. Cause I just, I just strongly believe that you will be a good piece. You're, you're a guy, but I, I, but I think, and I know that the way that you approach things, you know, it allows you to open up. Like I felt comfortable with you, you know, Carissa was telling me how she just adores you. Ropa was just telling me <laughs> like, oh my God, I can't wait to meet him. Right. Like, so these are, these, these are way too many compliments. This is <laughs> so crazy. that's already three. Nah, that's already that's crazy. three. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we're, we're just so excited to have you because right now where the world is Robert we need we need to know like so many people are quitting their jobs there's a labor shortage they want to be able to you know do their own thing and figure it out but we we got to make sure that our mental is in order right and we want to be able to make sure that when we do take these steps and we do these things that we're going with the right mindset and that's making sure we understand who we are so i can't wait i'm counting down the days as soon as you get here like i'm gonna i'm gonna look nice for you too like oh. <laughs> get my hair done everything <laughs> so we this is uh this is rock, rock, this is this is this is rock star treatment though. oh yeah you know? you're gonna get the southern hospitality we wow we're we gonna we're gonna make sure we take care of you once you get here so no worries I, on that it's funny because we're laughing now. I'll tell you, like, you women out there, you're beautiful outside and in, and you have gifts, you have beautiful smiles and nice laughter. It has to come out more. Yeah. It has to come out more. And it can. Oh, God. And it will. Oh, man. So we can't wait to have you. So we're going to uh, tell us for those people who can't make it how they could go ahead and get your book because we're, we're going to do this. This is our first time doing it this year but we are putting it on a calendar for next year to really take this to the next level mm -hmm. and everything so let us know where we can get your books and um and how to follow you if you are on social media i don't think you're on social media are you a little bit i have twitter and uh, facebook i don't you i don't use it that often okay. um, maybe i should but <laughs> <laughs> so how can we get the book then yeah you could go any on online uh retailer but easiest is just amazon.com you can just type in my name robert utaro u-t-t-a-r-o it'll show up right away uh to the survivors one man's journey as a rape crisis consulate with true stories of sexual violence um it's out there if you want it and again if you don't it's all good okay well robert we will see you on friday and we can't wait to get the retreat on i appreciate it and i thank you for being here yeah thank you so much all right. See you soon. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.